hear a drum. I hear a real specific drum. Let's let's go outside of my sound packs and go to Oh Gosh Leonis's drum loops. So we're going to chop this bad boy up. Chop this bad boy up. Uh. Shout out to Taylor Music. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we got some. Is it possible during the stream to explain? Yes, I can. Is it possible to explain, uh, do the stream explain how to get the kick and bass warm and full? All right. Yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely explain a little something. Ugh. That's cool. this thing together. Listen to this kick, right? See, well, I'm going to turn off this. I want y'all to use y'all ears and not your eyes. So I'm going to just solo this frequency right here. 
What do you hear when I specifically peak this frequency? Does it sound like like a box? If this sounds like a box, this is typically the frequency roughly around 100 on up to about 150. Roughly this frequency is going to be where your punch within your kick drum is going to be sitting. Now, most people, whenever I'm like working on on uh, tracks with them and whenever they're using stems, because I'm actually using a drum loop, not a, not a stem for this, uh, the frequency of the kick drum, in order to be able to get a full sound, it usually comprises of two parts. You have your punch frequency as well as your low end. You hear that? So whenever you're mixing your drums, search for wherever peaks are and boost the lows like whatever is too low boost those whatever is too high drop those so this kick drum is pretty it's pretty all right but i need this thing to like hit a certain way and there's two things that i'm gonna use to be able to like kind of cover up it with a drum loop so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna make the cue a little smaller As well, let's make another notch. Cue it. And we're just going solo. Now, when you couple this, looks extreme, but I'm using my ears, not my eyes. Now, on top of that, you're going to want to saturate everything. I need to know where that, that... That's a real uncomfortable frequency for me. All right, let's put it back in. Now, when I'm, I'm going to throw another thing as well on top of this. Drum buzz. Another plugin does this as well, and it's called the knock plugin. Matter of fact, I should use that because I'm pretty sure a lot of people, not everybody in this chat is probably using Ableton, but this is one of those things where like, all right, I need to be able to kind of get some, some uh, frequencies on these drums. Sometimes, if it calls for it, only on samples. I only do like extreme EQ, but usually the less is more. So I usually start off by being like, all right, what is missing? What is missing or what needs to be turned down? Uh, usually the, tur the turning down point is what I usually start with first, but because the, the frequencies are already there for the drum, it's already like, oh, I ain't much I got to do to it. Matter of fact, I learned this joint from Count. Count sometimes does this. He'll just roll off the highs completely. Yeah, the 
just like that. to see where he took this. change these other ones there we go it back on yep there we go all right make sure those turn back on and i'm doing automation from the master right now so i like to i like to do those type of things <laughs> Turn this back on. Yeah. Uh, uh. There we go. There we go. Ooh, 
Ooh, triangle. Triangle. Triangular. Yeah. Yep, we're going to throw that right here and turn it all the way down. All the way down. Yeah. Make this a little later. Yep, yep, yep. Shout out to Pro Leslie. Subscribing. We appreciate you, brethren.
talking about. That's what I, I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna add the uh, parts to the Discord.
got you though. Guys, guys, this is fire. What if I like, what if I record the entire thing and then put it in reverse? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that whole thing. I'm gonna record the whole thing. What are we gonna name this, guys? <laughs> what are we gonna name this? Shout out to Bob Monk for gifting subs. Shout out! Shout out! <laughs> what are we gonna name this, y'all? What are we gonna name this joint? I'm very curious. I need I, I need a good name. A good name. Uh, what should we name this? What shall we name this? I know it features PJ, Terror, Beats, and King Scar. But I'm going to take this, this reverse. 
put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. But someone took that, though. I can't do that. I can't. I got to do it in a different way. I, I did something like that earlier a couple couple months ago, I think. Like, I was very inspired by that Miss Yelly thing. Call it lucky. <laughs> oh, man. Wait. Lucky. Let's do lucky. Lucky with P PJ, Tara Beats, King Scar. And I'm going to take everything we just did and flip it. 46. Because I just put it in reverse. And usually reverse gives us other options for it. So this is how you typically make two beats in one. <laughs> so we're going to save this as uh, alternate. Yeah, that's cool. And we delete everything. <laughs> there we go. Now. So now I'm going to just take it. Let's see here. Beat. Transpose. Let's region it. some real quick. Automation, bam, just like that, and we're there. like stretch it one more time yeah that's what i'm talking about 
synth is, I'm going to throw that little auto, auto filter on this. Chop this joint up, put it right here. Yeah. Thirty two. like a 16 bar loop i just slice it up into 32 sections that fit into a 16 bar loop so it's not going off of bpm there's no bpm warped at all it's just it's just 16 16 bars that are all 32 regions i could make it even smaller than that i could make it 64 but it's perfect if your bar is already 16 uh beats which is why, like, the old school method is to sample and only hold 16 bar loops of whatever the sample is you're sampling. So I'm, like, taking an old school approach and applying it to Ableton. Thank you. 
take this even more than this let's make even more chops out of it take off the filter turn off warp Thinking of this right now. since there's a lot of people watching right now. Might as well tell you why, Alphonse. <laughs> uh, 
Alphonse, I'll tell you, this upcoming Thursday, this upcoming Thursday, me, hey, I am dropping an album, and I'm having a listen party this Thursday. And on top of that, I'm going to break down a little bit Thursday. Just because you said it. I'm going to let you guys know exactly how that whole song went down. I'll show you everything that went into the inspiration behind it as well as the visual content. I'll break it all down. This Thursday, 10 p.m., I'm going to be live on this Twitch stream. Tell your friends. Tell your buddies. The funk will prevail. Yes. And I'm actually going to I'm going to respond to this. Why don't music like Cordae's really sell? Conscious rap or boom bap music really? Well, I'll be honest with you. I think to a, to a degree because <sighs> the terrible truth is conscious rap, not a lot of people want to listen to it. Not a lot of people want to think, especially 9 times out of 10. Exactly. Tara B says they want to bump stuff they could play in the club. And I think I'm actually going to make this real quick. I'm going to talk over this beat. So, essentially, music, unfortunately, you have to think about where you're playing the music at. Where are a majority of the people who listen to music, brand new music that hits every single time? They're at the club. Nine times out of ten, they're at the club. Or they're at a game. You know, majority of music that sells, unfortunately, are usually at events where people are experiencing things where they don't think. They're not cognitively thinking. Um, uh, but I do believe you can still do the exact same thing like conscious rap or boom bap music if you sprinkle a little bit of like what's, I guess, approachable and a little bit of truth with it. For instance, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino came out with This Is America. That was a huge hit. He missed an incredible opportunity to drop an album at that point because he would have had another number one album at that point. But he didn't do that. But that album, that song, that song when it released, it was a mixture of truth and a little bit of uh, fun. So you got to be able to blend the both worlds with that. Some of the best songs have a blend of the, like, the turn up and something really deep. I mean, think about it. Hey, y'all was about a was about a relationship that didn't want to extend on. That's why socially people always play uh, Kendrick Lamar's Damn, but they never, never go back to, to the Pimp a Butterfly. That was a different, that was a different record. When it came out, folks weren't ready for jazz music. But at the same time, it's a cultural standpoint into what we do, you know? So, unfortunately, unless Corday is willing to to go, like, and sprinkle a little bit of the fun with the truth, give a little bit of medicine with the, the music, then it works, you know? I mean, I'm starting to learn about that whenever I do my music. Like, I realize the majority of the people who do watch me on my social media, not everybody can play an instrument. Some people are really, really dope at understanding samples. So I try to give you enough ear candy so you're like, I can walk away with knowing like, oh man, I'm inspired to make a beat right now. But even though I can't play a, a, a cello or a bass guitar, I'm, I'm still influenced to try and make, to make a ch sample chop. That's cool. Like it, you know? So yeah, it's, it's in a little bit of everything that you do, you know? You can't be so overly in the gifted of like talking about like the deep thought type stuff because at the club no one's going to be bumping that unfortunately unless you know how to sprinkle a little bit of medicine with the 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 candy so that's the only way it works genuinely that's the only way it really works you know and if you know how to master it you're respected people will be like oh how do you do he just learned a lot of people just learned how to master that truth with the fun you know so keep that in thought keep that in thought that's how it works but this is a great secondary beat and um brooklyn michelle says shout out to brooklyn michelle she's a goat i've been trying to think of expression the whole time yeah because like i don't know man like i really and here's the crazy thing here's the here's a crazy thing when i made i made an album not too long ago maybe back in 2018 i dropped the album in 2018 no i think it was 2019 
Let me check. I'll look this up on, on Spotify real quick. Hold on. Let me look this up. I made an album at the beginning of, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys on my discog if y'all know what it is. It's called It All Ends. This album, I'm going to just enter it in see if it works. If it does, it all ends. Yeah, so this album right here, guys. This album is a great explanation towards the, the overly musician glorified album where everything, I kid you not, is at least, at least heavily musical and i remember putting everything i had into this album but i realized it all ends wasn't the ending it was just the beginning of me understanding everything i know now and so fast forward to 2020 when 2020 happened i remember a buddy of mine my homie paul was like yo wouldn't it be funny if moments got more reception musically than your previous project kind of stung a little bit but it made me think like man that album is like 40 something minutes long and on an average day not everybody's gonna be able to sit down for 40 minutes straight because everybody's doing a lot of stuff people are just moving so i figured why not make a whole album that's like 13 minutes uh and check this out moments and i'll show you guys and not even and don't even look at the plays a lot of people know this record a lot of people know this record but look at how short the songs are 51 seconds a minute 34 a minute i am keeping it short and simple with musicality even even on a little bit the duration a little bit is short it's a minute 49 I got one verse and a hook. <laughs> and it's crazy. Like, you know, I, and I made it all ends more, more so for me personally than, you know, trying to get plays and stuff. But this helped me understand what I was doing, you know. And so with that in mind, remember to sprinkle, remember to sprinkle a little bit of love and truth into it, which is why I think uh the beauty behind like creating now for like my music and stuff i like creating short songs that are like a lot in a very short amount of time just enough for you to grasp it you can predict it so uh yeah just just remember that sprinkle a little bit of medicine with the truth and you're you're a little bit of medicine with the candy and you're, you're good all right let's see here we got we got a guitar in the the discord we're gonna add that real quick all right, let's see what's going on here. He played as well as playing. Gotta roll out in a bit, but remember, I will be going live again this Thursday. This Thursday, I will be live previewing my brand new album, and I'll be breaking down a couple songs from the album. And uh, yes, the funk will prevail. Tell your friends. Post it on Twitter. Post it on Twitter. The funk will prevail. The funk will prevail. Post it. Yes. And so, yeah, I'll be going live. I'll be going live. 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 I might do a raid. Where should I do a raid? Where should I do a raid at? What, like, how, enlighten me how to do that, Terra Beast, because I want to know how to do my first raid. I want to make sure I pull up on the right person at the right time to do a raid. But yes, 
I'll be going live playing my brand new album, The Funk Will Prevail, Thursday. It drops Friday. I want to be able to listen to it with you guys and get y'all's response and see what y'all think, man, you know? So, uh, yes, I love you guys, and um, see you Thursday. The Funk Will Prevail.